tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas namo tas bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhas homage to the blessed one the worthy one the fully enlightened one Homage to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Fully Enlightened One. Homage to the Blessed One, the Worthy One, the Fully Enlightened One. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Hello Dhamma friends. Now we are going to start Sutta study class online. I hope you participate in this discussion of a particular Sutta today. Uh, Thursday is the day we uh, conduct this uh, Sutta study class but due to some reasons we change the day only for this week. Uh, so today we are fortunate that we could have this discussion. Uh, this is uh, very important for us because learning the Dhamma and reciting the Dhamma and reflecting the Dhamma are some of the important factors for our uh, the, uh, you know spiritual progress so the sutta we select today is really important and it is related to what we have been experiencing these days um, the sutta i keep as the theme for today's uh, study is called gilana sutta it could be uh, famously uh, you know, or the discourse delivered to the uh, Venerable Kassapa with regard to uh, the f seven factors of enlightenment. I think uh, some of you heard about this discourse before because it is taken into uh, Piruana Potwahansi in Singhala the chanting book from the original source. Therefore, it is being recited by monks and devotees in that chanting book. Therefore, this would be very famous among uh, the devotees. The other reason uh, for this discourse to be famous is the seven factors of enlightenment. Because uh, these seven factors are required to practiced uh, by everyone if they want to attain enlightenment. Nobody can go uh, into nirvana without these seven factors. The other important reason possibly for this discourse to be famous uh, is because Venerable Kassapa uh, was sick and uh, Buddha visited him and delivered the seven factors of enlightenment as the Buddha practiced. Uh, therefore, this discourse uh, is famous as a chanting uh, for sick people. Even Venerable Mahakasapa uh, got out of his uh, sickness after this, uh, you know, sermon delivered by the Buddha. Because of these reasons, uh, basically the last one, uh, this sutta uh, is important for us because we are I passing. Uh, very difficult period with the COVID-19 and everybody is thinking about what kind of things we can do with the Buddhist chanting and reflection on uh, various Dharma facts and even meditation. So we can discuss this factor in details during the discussion. So friends, uh, try your best to understand the seven factors of enlightenment from the other teaching and develop them in your daily life, which is the aim of this Sutta study class. Um, if, if I pay attention to the uh, background story of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, the Gilana Sutta, I think uh, that is good because uh, uh, we need to understand what made the Buddha to deliver this discourse. Um, 
So Gilan Sutta, or the Sutta that we talks about uh, uh, the seven factors of enlightenment, has a st uh, background story. Venerable Mahamogalana was sick in uh, in uh, in a call in a cave called uh, Pippali Guhayang uh, at uh, Rajagaha. Buddha heard about uh, Venerable Mahakasapa's uh, illness, so he visited that place. Uh, it is said that uh, Venerable, Moggalla, uh, Venerable Mahakasa was severely ill. This could be basically a physical ailment, which is uh, painful. Then Buddha visited and uh, said that whether you could uh, bear the pain, uh, whether you can uh, exist with this severe pain, is it uh, subsiding, uh, subsiding or increasing, Buddha asked. Then uh, Venerable Mahakasapa said that, no Venerable Sir, there is no signs of a, a decreasing of the pain, but it is increasing uh, moment by moment. It is not easy to bear the physical pain. It is too much, Buddha, uh, Venerable Mahakasapa said. So uh, then uh, uh, Buddha said uh, very clearly that, don't worry, uh, you may concentrate on seven factors of enlightenment, Satta Bojjanga, as I practice, Buddha said. Not anybody else practice he talk about. Buddha said clearly that, think about the seven factors of enlightenment as the Buddha practice. Maya, Samma, Dakkata, Bhavita, Bahulikata, uh, and so forth, Buddha said, as I uh, explain the seven factors of enlightenment and practice and practice more and more uh, and so on. So Buddha basically said to Venerable Mahakasapa, just take these uh, seven factors of enlightenment, enlightenment into your consideration or reflection and uh, think about over them. So then Buddha started uh, the seven factors of enlightenment in the discourse. Uh, let me uh, read the discourse first, then you would understand uh, the discourse better. Uh, give me a second to take the discourse. In the meantime, you can uh, take your discourse as I email you and uh, begin reading. Uh, So, uh, <clears throat> uh, this discourse uh, started with the uh, enlightening factor of mindfulness. So, enlightening factor of mindfulness is being developed as the way uh, it is. Uh, Satisam Bojango uh, Ko Kasapa Maya Sam Dakato Bavito Bahuli Kato Abinyaya Sambodha Sangvatati. Meaning, mindfulness, the factor of enlightenment, Kasapa, is well expounded by me. So, Venerable Kasapa, uh, being an Arahant at this stage, he uh, practiced mindfulness into its completion. So Buddha here reminded Venerable Kasapa that mindfulness as the factor of enlightenment is expounded my, by me very well. So Venerable Kasapa knows this fact, but due to the severe pain, uh, Buddha want uh, Buddha is needed. Buddha needed to remind Venerable Kasapa that I have explained mindfulness in details with explanation. What do you, what do we need to take at this occasion with regard to mindfulness? Uh, uh, basically, Buddha explained mindfulness in uh, in details in the Satipatthan Sutta for foundation of mindfulness. And mindfulness has been explained in many ways in the Noble Eightfold Path, 
in five spiritual faculties, in five powers, elsewhere mindfulness has been explained in many ways. So uh, above all these explanation, uh, here at the uh, seven factors of enlightenment, Buddha explained it very well, expounded well, and explained well. Uh, then uh, uh, cultivated you know, seven mindfulness as the factor of enlightenment is cultivated, fully developed by me. It leads to a special knowledge, to realization of the noble truth and to Nibbana. In Pali it is said, uh, Abhinyaya Sambodhaya uh, Nibbanaya Sangvartati. So if you practice mindfulness as an enlightenment factor, it should lead you to uh, Abhinyaya, the knowledge of uh, special knowledges. And uh, wh what are the special knowledge knowledges about the Four Noble Truths? Sambodaya. Sambodaya means, uh, again, uh, being able to understand the Four Noble Truths. Then Nibbana Sangvatati. It takes you to Nibbana. If, if we practice mindfulness as an enlightenment factor, it has a direct connection with the uh, special knowledges such as being able to read others' mind, being able to know what is going on over there and here and there. So that kind of knowledges are achieved through mindfulness if we practice it as the as an enlightenment factor. And also Sambodaya, if mindfulness is being developed into this level, that also connect with the understanding of Four Noble Truths. And we know that uh, understanding Four Noble Truths and its completion is, uh, is close to Nibbana. So Buddha here reminded Venerable Mahakasapa that I have, been pract I have practiced mindfulness uh, and developed uh, as the way it uh, takes me and everyone to uh, special knowledges and understanding Four Noble Truths and reaching Nibbana. So B Buddha basically asked Venerable Mahakasapa to th uh, you know, think about that the Buddha practice the factor of mindfulness Sati uh, into this level. Let's go to the other uh, seven factors first then we can have a discussion. Uh, Next one, Dhamma vichaya sambhojjango ko kasapa maya sammadakkato bhavito bahuli kato abhinyaya sambhodaya nibbanaya sangvartati. The second enlightened factor is called Dhamma vichaya. Uh, it, the translation is given in different ways, uh, which are all okay in my view. Here, investigation of the Dhamma or discerning factor of the Dhamma. So that's called Dhamma Vichya. It's called investigating. You all, always question and uh, dig uh, deep into to get the meaning. So this is of course related to uh, right understanding or Sammaditi in the Noble Eightfold Path and uh, spiritual faculty called Panya uh, in uh, five spiritual faculties and Panya Bala five hours. So this has been uh, said in, uh, in other places with different names. So basically this is the way we cultivate wisdom as uh, uh, enlightening enli enli enlighten in factor or awakening factor. So uh, uh, then Buddha said that me as the Buddha practice expounded this uh, Dhamma which or discerning factor very well and uh, it has been developed by me uh, and it leads to uh, special knowledges, understanding Four Noble Truths and also Nibbana. Before I go further on these fact, uh, seven factors of enlightenment, I just need to tell you what 
what does it mean the bo bojang uh, so awakening factor of enlightenment why these things are called by that name so that's uh, that should be understood when we say uh, mindfulness uh, dhamma which uh, discerning factor and other factors enlightening factors it means they take us to nirvana directly when mindfulness is in noble eightfold path we don't call it is both younger or uh, enlightening or awakening factor we call it um, you know one uh, mug or path for uh, in in the co- in the context and then we have uh, other designations uh, when it is in other set of teaching so bodh yanga or awakening factor means uh, when you practice it you take it to enlightenment uh, in addition you have uh, you cannot practice awakening factors with hindrances Uh, we know what are the hindrances anything disturb our mind are called hindrances basically buddha categorized them in as five the first one kama chanda second one uh, vyapada kama chanda means sensual pleasure second one vyapada means ill will third one uh, tena vidda the sleepiness and drowsiness of the body and mind the fourth one uddacha kokucha restlessness and worry uh, which is which are the last one skeptical doubt these are the five hindrances when one of these uh, uh, arises in our mind uh, we cannot uh, go forward in the spiritual path our mind is disturbed our mind is in craving and greed uh, so these five or oh, uh, one of the one of them Uh, could uh, pollute our mind so when people have these five we cannot practice uh, sati mindfulness as an enlightened awakening factor or any uh, other six could not be practiced into that level so practicing enlightenment factor begins when one deal with the five hindrances and overcome them basically uh, mindfulness Uh, as an enlightening factor uh, arises in our mind uh, right after we uh, you know overcome five hindrances so that should be understood so the, the then the definition clear definition is there that why we call uh, enlightenment enlightening factor for these seven because they uh they are beyond all these uh, level i'm going to take this fact again with the with a different discourse so then you would understand why and how important these seven so we are talking about uh, uh, dhamma vichaya it is the wisdom part uh, dhamma means uh, every phenomena vichaya mean vinischa in reflection investigation analysis so you are analyzing every phenomena in the context of uh, developing other qualities in the context of seeking the truth so you analyze every physical and mental aspect uh, with the hope of clearing your mind so that's called dhamma vichaya the uh, third one is uh, virya sambojjang virya perseverance or effort we have this uh, effort in the noble eightfold path in other set uh, other set of teaching like the mindfulness sati and dhamma vichaya uh, you know investigation uh, virya is very important uh, or effort is very important if we uh, look at the way how uh, it is explained in the noble eightfold path it is said uh, the first effort is to uh, uh, you know not to let our mind for unreason unskillful thoughts so already you don't have those unskillfulness so your try is to cut off the opportunities for them not for them to, uh, not to arise so that is the first one the second effort in the uh, noble eightfold path is uh, if you uh, you know you know feel that there are unskillfulness in your mind 
your try should be to overcome them immediately. So your try is to uh, cut off those uh, recent negative forces in your mind. That is the second aspect or the second part of the uh, right effort. The third one, if you do not have skillful qualities in your mind, try your best to get them uh, into application. Then the last one, whatever you, uh, you know, uh, you know, do for reason of uh, good qualities, uh, you have to protect them, you have to maintain them. So in such a way, Buddha explained four types of effort in the uh, Noble Eightfold Path under the, uh, you know, factor called uh, you know, Samma Vayam, right effort. We don't see any difference uh, uh, here. It is, it is the same way, but as I said, uh, this is called Bodhyanga, Virya Sambodhyanga. Virya means effort or the perseverance. This factor would help mindfulness and wisdom to begin their, uh, you, know, you know, application. Without Virya, we cannot see mindfulness uh, and wisdom uh, coming into, uh, you know, existence. So Virya is mental energy. We do not talk about physical energy here. There should be a physical. There should be physical energy for mind to work with a strong, as uh, you know, space. But uh, virya as an enlightening factor is basically called uh, physical, you know, uh, mental energy. So it's called spiritual energy too. So Buddha said to Venerable Mahakasapa that I uh, explain. Uh, the virya factor as uh, as an uh, awakening factor very well, and I have I had been practice it very well into its completion. So whenever you practice or we practice virya as an awakening factor, we would be able to uh, uh, clear our knowledge uh, and achieve some knowledges and uh, understanding Four Noble Truth would be possible and Nibbana is the you know, end of this uh, Virya 2. Now we have been initially uh, discussing uh, three factors so far. The mindfulness as, a, as, a, as an awakening factor, then the Dharma Vichya, discerning factor, discerning Dharma as an enlightening factor, then Virya or effort right effort is as a uh, awakening factor. So these three factors of the enlightenment active part of the seven. Uh, these three work together. They are very important and uh, they are the active part of our mind. Let me explain you this from an example. Uh, if you want to meditate, for example, uh, you sit and uh, you should have mindfulness there. Uh, focus your breath and focus uh, your feelings and the body. Then uh, that's mindfulness basically. You cannot uh, do this mindfulness practice without wisdom there, without investigation. Like uh, if you do not know the importance of mindfulness, uh, which based on the body and feeling and sensation and mind, yeah, how do you start it? So mindfulness or samadhiti or dhamma which here come into uh, play there just for mindfulness to sustain. But very importantly, without virya or effort, you cannot do that either. So uh, otherwise you may, uh, you may not be focusing well because virya is not there. Uh, your attention could be, uh, you know, uh, splitted and uh, go everywhere. So virya must be there just for mindfulness to watch physical and uh, mental behavior, and then the wisdom should activate it there. Should be activated there just to direct mindfulness and also keep the virya in its full shape. So these three come together for. Uh, uh, in, the, in the practice for us to give the maximum benefit. So now we go to the uh, fourth one. 
Titi Sambojango Kokasab Maya Samadakato Bavito Bahuli Kato Abinya Sambo Dai Nibana Sangwatati. Piti means rapture or assist. Uh, the factor of enlightenment Piti Kasab is well expounded by me and cultivated by me and fully developed by me. Buddha said it leads to special knowledge to realization of the four noble truths and to Nibbana. So, Piti uh, is a very uh, relaxing and uh, very important quality that we all should experience. Uh, I remember uh, Buddha's statement in another discourse. Uh, it is that uh, uh, he said that uh, I do not uh, worry about uh, you know, enjoying pleasure uh, when someone totally eradicate the five hindrances. When someone uh, deal with the five hindrances and uh, overcome them, there is a happiness. And Buddha said that enjoying that pleasure is okay for everyone. That pleasure is not anything but pity. Mental, uh, you know, happiness is called pity. So it could not be experienced by way of seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, touching, but uh, your mind should be developed beyond that level, then only you would achieve piti. Here we can see the uh, piti as a result of practicing the mindfulness, discerning factor, dhamma vicha, investigation, and also applying virya well. So with the practicing of first three awakening factors as a result uh, we have PT the third uh, fourth factor of enlightenment so PT is a mental piece as a result of practicing uh, the first three bojanga uh, or the awakening factors uh, Pasadi sambojango, co kasapa, maya samadakato, bavito, bauli kato, abinya, samboda, nibana, sangwatati. Now we go to the uh, fifth, fifth bodhi anga, fifth awakening factor. It is called pasadi. Pasadi, the Pali word means uh, tranquility. We talk about tranquility of the body, tranquility of the mind. Both, both the tranquilities are discuss in this factor. So uh, tranquility or calmness, the factor of this factor of enlightenment is expounded by the Buddha very well and Buddha also practice it very well uh, in numerous ways and uh, he said that this leads to special knowledges and the realization of four noble truths and also it leads to Nibbana. So Venerable Khasapa is uh, taking his attention to all these factors of enlightenment while the Buddha explain them, while the Buddha recite them, while the Buddha expound them in front of Venerable Mahakasapa. We know that what could happen to us if our attention goes to a particular object. For example, uh, if we look at the TV and watch a news which are interesting for us, we won't be able to pay attention to other things and perhaps we do not remember whether there is somebody else with me because our attention goes to what we watch and no other uh, sensation and other objects could be noticed very well. Likewise, uh, here Venerable Kasapa paid the undivided attention to what the Buddha said, therefore his mind is not bothering about the physical pain now. So something significant is happening inside the, the Venerable Mahakasapa's physical body related to the ailment and he is uh, paying attention to the seven factors of enlightenment. So far we discussed only five. Uh, altogether there are seven and he is paying attention to these seven with so much Atten, uh, you know, awareness so that Venerable Kasapa, uh, as if he forget about the physical ailment. 
as a result he experienced uh, you know pt the rapture and also pass out the into certain extent if i stay uh, in uh, explaining the pass out the further i will tell you that it is the total opposite of ailment in the in the sickness we feel our body uh, is beaten by somebody or pressed by something and uh, pa every pain is everywhere it is unbearable uh, so we don't find any relaxation in the body anymore with the sickness so uh, so but when we get into tranquility state physically and mentally uh, our body is so relaxed and light and uh, it is uh, uh, like uh, you are sitting on a comfortable cushion and uh, the air condition is there and you are you don't have any problem with the physical body you feel very relaxed that kind of uh you know mental and physical relaxation is there with the factor uh, factor tranquility so now when venerable mahakasyapa listen to this he uh of course experience this from his mind as well as slowly with the body so i'm show, i'm showing you that uh, physical ailment is slowly fading away from venerable kasapa's body because he has been uh, reflecting the seven factors of enlightenment now the sixth one samadhi sambhojjango ko kasapa maya samadakka to bhavito baulika to abhinnaya sambodaya nibbanaya sangvartate this talk about the right concentration uh, or samma samadhi uh you know one of the uh, important topics in buddha's discovery samma samadhi the very word is pleasing our mind just hearing about samma samadhi bring us some type of joy actually when one uh, you know re remove himself from uh, normal average lifestyles to uh, man a super mundane Uh, very peaceful life you experience this this is a milestone of this practice if you attain to samadhi uh, you would experience that this world is nothing but this uh, samadhi is the important thing for the for the for you there is such a emotional and a very peaceful state there so here but the said samadhi sambhojjango ko kasap maya samadakkato when kasapa i uh, i have explained samadhi or the concentration uh, very well uh, without any uh, you know residue without any anything left about the concept i have explained the samadhi or concentration enough and very well uh, it i i practiced it and i come to completion of it practice so that's mean buddha has covered all aspect of samadhi nobody could reach to that level so therefore uh, would the no would the buddha know that would the knows that this samadhi is not for anything but for special knowledge it gives uh, the knowledge of the four noble truth and it is the foundation for one to reach to nibbana so venerable kasapa reflected that as well upekka sambhojjango ko kasap maya samadakka to bhavito bahulika to abhinnaya sambodaya nibbanaya sangvartati the last one uh, out of seven is upekka sambhojjanga it is called equanimity equanimity the factor of enlightenment kasap is well expounded cultivated and fully developed by me buddha said it leads to special knowledge to realization of the four noble truths and to nibbana so like the other seven six factors this factor uh, equanimity is also taking one to special knowledge uh, realization of four noble truths and to nibbana uh, uh, if somebody practice like the buddha so now we have come across all seven factors of enlightenment in a, uh, 
in a simple way. So how do we practice these seven factors of enlightenment? If we go to Ahara Sutta, another discourse in Sanyutta Nikaya, this discourse clearly says that what kind of uh, things we need to do to develop seven factors of enlightenment. Right? By giving dana, by observing seal, by doing other uh, activities prescribed in Buddhist culture, I don't think we could practice seven, you know, mindfulness and uh, investigation effort as enlightened factors, as awakening factors. What we need to do is to have Yoniso Manasikara in the first place. Yoniso, when there is Yoniso Manasikara, uh, you know, activated according to a certain level, we are able to overcome hindrances. In the Ahara Sutta of Sangutta Nikaya, Buddha talk about seven factors of enlightenment could not arise in our mind because of the hindrances. So long hindrances exist in our mind, no signs of seven factors of enlightenment in our mind, in our practice. So uh, he said very clearly in the Ahara Sutta, I will, you know, I will teach you the feeding and star starving of the five hindrances and also the seven factors of awakening. So he said, what is the food for the arising of an arisen sensual desire? We know the first hindrance is sensual desire, Kama Chanda. Uh, what is the food for an arisen sensual desire? And what cause this sensual desire uh, uh, to grow and increase uh, in our mind? The, the, the theme of beauty. So basically, we have this sense of beauty and we, we like to enjoy ourselves. This is the very cause for karma chanda or sensual desire to arise. Let me tell you in other words. I told you that sensual desire and other five hindrances uh, do not let uh, seven factors of enlightenment to arise in our mind. So what these five hindrances, uh, you know, uh, and how these five hindrances come into exist because of some sort of uh, desire. So Buddha said in Nahar Sutta, because of the desire for enjoying your senses, we develop five hindrances and no signs of uh, seven factors of enlightenment. So basically in this discourse he said, uh, Ayoniso Manasikara, or the uh, inappropriate attention lead for people to develop greed, hatred, and so on, then uh, five hindrances works always in our mind, uh, you know, making barriers for seven factors of enlightenment. In, in, in other words, uh, seven factors of enlightenment could be developed as, as the way we destroy the five hindrances. That is what we mentioned in the Ahara Sutta. Now I would like to take uh, uh, you to think about the connections of uh, these seven factors of enlightenment. Uh, mindfulness as the factor of enlightenment is the first one. Then we have uh, Dhamma Viche or the discerning or investigating factor as the awakening factor. Now after that we have effort and uh, uh, piti rapture and then uh, uh, other enlightened factors. So what is the connection? Buddha in many discourses explained this also that uh, mindfulness being the first factor of the seven factors of enlightenment, uh, do not come in the first place. First three factors should come together. What are the first three factors of enlightenment? Mindfulness, uh, 
wisdom or discerning factor or dhamma vichaya and the effort or virya these three has the you know power and energy to come together and develop themselves we can see this in the noble eightfold path samadhiti right understanding right um, you know uh, samadhiti samma sankap right intention then we have effort somewhere uh, later in the noble eightfold path but it should come closer to and together with uh, right understanding and right intention to develop themselves uh, it is every, uh, same as uh, other set of teaching so when we look at the connection of each factor buddha said clearly that mindfulness is there attention or being able to notice should be there for wisdom to arise and wisdom when it is developed it develop the perseverance again perseverance develop mindfulness mindfulness develop perseverance so these three as a cycle work together to develop so when these three develops together uh, as a result we have piti rapture passaddi tranquility samadhi concentration uh, upekka equanimity as results again uh, from another analysis we i can tell you that piti rapture uh, passat the tranquility samadhi concentration and upekka equanimity are uh, the qualities of four jhana if you take the four jhanas into uh, into your mind uh, in the first one we talk about uh, happiness having uh, subdued the five hindrances uh, uh, we have piti sukha ekagrata rapture pleasure and one pointedness born from uh, suppression of five hindrances so we have piti there then in the second jhana we have uh, you know very solid samadhi level based on subduing of vitaka vichara sustained and applying to so there is a tranquility there then uh, samadhi is really manifesting uh, with its full form when we reach to third uh, you know jhana uh, and it is said that this is the very jhanic experience that all noble people stay for longer that is uh, the third jhana uh, in the fourth jhana the prominent quality is equanimity the upekka so we talk about the uh, uh, you know balance of my leaving all happy and unhappy things from your mind so when we talk about the last four awakening factors they are very related to four jhanic experiences so now you know that uh, if we cannot practice seven factors of enlightenment without some sort of basic foundation the at least we would be able to deal with the five hindrances and destroy them temporarily in order to uh, let our mind to embrace these seven factors of enlightenment so friends i can tell you many things about this but uh, time is not permitting for me to do that basically we have to understand what uh, what are the seven factors of enlightenment what gravity we have the, with these seven factors of enlightenment in attaining enlightenment and why do we call them uh, factors of enlightenment uh, why not they are similar with the other you know set of teaching in the buddha's teaching and so on we have to understand that in the in the in this discussion and also uh, we have to understand what happened to enable kasapa uh, at the end of the discourse so buddha explained the seven factors of enlightenment as he expounded before and as he practice and uh, into uh, their completion so venerable kasapa was asked to uh, think that buddha, the buddha practice the seven factors of enlightenment it doesn't mean that venerable venerable kasapa did not he he also did that but due to the severity of the physical pain he may not be in that mindset buddha was there to remind him to take his attention back to the dhamma then venerable kasapa 
uh, was thinking about the seven factors of enlightenment and he was able to overcome physical pain. At the end of the discourse, Venerable Mahakasapa was able to overcome the physical pain and got out of his seat, uh, it is said in the discourse. Now, uh, we have questions. Uh, can we use this discourse to help out sick people? Can sick people listen and cure themselves like Venerable Kasapa? Can monks recite uh, with the, expecting the same results today? So these are some of the questions uh, people asked when we take this uh, sutta into discussion. Uh, you know what? Uh, the first thing is, oh, we would be able to practice these seven factors into certain level in order to, you know, uh, produce such results. And the one who listen to these seven factors in uh, factors of enlightenment would be able to reflect. Uh, his or her own seven factors of enlightenment. In this uh, example, uh, the discourse uh, Gilana Sutta, Buddha, the Buddha practiced these seven factors of enlightenment into highest extent. Uh, Venerable Mahakasapa was also an Arahant at the uh, at the time Buddha delivered this discourse. Then he was also able to reflect what he practiced. So both parties were so eminent uh, on the seven factors of enlightenment. So therefore, they were Venerable Mahakasapa was able to get uh, his mind back to seven factors of enlightenment, and Buddha was not uh, find any difficulty in making the final results. But when we recite, are we, uh, you know, uh, are we? Me, you know, completing these seven factors of enlightenment? Have we done everything? No. And the people who are sick on the on the hospital or where, wherever they are, well, have they, you know, understood these factors of enlightenment? I don't think so. That's why today recitation of these seven factors of enlightenment could not result such uh, ends like in Mahakasapa's story. Uh, uh, at the same time, uh, we can think that uh, these seven factors of enlightenment are not easy uh, as if you are not, uh, you know, uh, overcoming the five hindrances. You could not get that power. So we can have uh, similar discourses like uh, uh, Moggallan, Venerable Moggallan also got sick and Buddha same as in this discourse visited Venerable Moggallana uh, and delivered the same content and he also got uh, uh, his good health back. And once uh, the Buddha was sick uh, physically and Mahachunda, another famous monk at that time, uh, visited the Buddha and he reminded uh, the Buddha that you practice the seven factors of enlightenment and think about it and Buddha also was also able to uh, recover from his ailment. So these are the three occasions we could find that uh, someone took this uh, these seven factors of enlightenment uh, and help somebody who is sick. And one of our friends asked the question uh, why Buddha delivered uh, seven factors of enlightenment, um, going to Venerable Mahakasapa and Moggallana uh, to their place uh, when he did not uh, uh, do the same thing when uh, Venerable Girimananda uh, you know, was sick. Uh, if I explain you further that, there, there was a monk called Girimananda and he was sick severely. Then uh, Venerable Ananda went to the Buddha and reported that Venerable Girimananda was sick. Then Buddha did not go to Venerable Girimananda but asked Venerable Ananda to learn uh, Dasa Sanya, 10 perception, not the same content, different context, different content, seven factors 
enlightenment is different from ten perception. So Buddha did not tell Venerable Ananda to recite the seven factors of enlightenment, uh, but he taught Venerable Ananda the, the ten perception. Then Venerable Ananda went to Venerable Girimananda with the ten perception in mind as the Buddha taught him and he recited all ten perception in front of Venerable Girimananda. So he was able to uh, recover by listening to uh, ten uh, perception uh, and uh, the question one of our friends asked why is that? Actually she had uh, answered the question in, in, in uh, in her email that uh, Venerable <coughs> Moggallana and Venerable Kassapa they were uh, they were able to hear uh, the seven factors of enlightenment uh, as I repeatedly say uh, you know Buddha practiced them very well and Buddha was there and the content is different and Girimananda uh, you know being uh, uh, sick, uh, Venerable Ananda uh, was enough with the ten, ten perception uh, for him to recite uh, and uh, let Venerable Girimananda to get his good health back. So that is why I think uh, Buddha did not go and send Venerable Ananda. So Buddha did not want uh, himself to go but uh, he uh, understood that from his knowledge that Venerable Ananda was good enough with the ten perception to go there and uh, help uh, Venerable Girimananda. So that is uh, the discourse. Now you know what are the seven factors uh, of enlightenment. So uh, these days myself and Bhante Sunita uh, recite uh, Ratana Sutta and Girimananda Sutta uh, for the blessings of the, you know, all human beings because of the uh, COVID-19, everybody got stuck at home and some people got sick, so we do that. So this Bojjangatera uh, Sutta or the Gilana Sutta is also recited by some monks in different temples. So can we get good results by reciting a discourse if not we are in that Dhamma. I don't think so. When we recite uh, Ratana Sutta and Gila, uh, Girimananda Sutta, Gilana Sutta or any Sutta for the blessings, we should at least understand the meaning and practice some sort of uh, Dhamma in there. Then our mind becomes uh, powerful with that. So this is sample clear uh, in Kasapatera Bojjanga, this discourse and other discourses. So, in order to help somebody with the blessings, you may be able to practice Sila and Dhamma in the discourse, at least absorb the concept well and with compassionate mind recite. Then only uh, we could be able to, uh, uh, you know, produce some blessings out of compassion and uh, help the uh, sick people. So friends, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, we, we should stop here. Uh, my message to you to read the discourse and try to understand the seven factors of enlightenment as much as you can. Uh, the fa mindfulness as the factor of enlightenment. Dhamma which or discerning uh, factor as the enlightening factor. Then virya or effort as the factor of enlightenment, rapture or piti as the factor of enlightenment, then tranquility as the factor of enlightenment, uh, samadhi or concentration as the factor of enlightenment, the last one is equity or upekka. So these are very profound qualities uh, but we can practice them uh, as the way we practice meditation. If you are able to take a meditation subject such as breathing and uh, deal with the breathing, concentrate well and you may start developing these factors of enlightenment. As I said, uh, the direct opposite of the factors of enlightenment are the five hindrances. So 
easiest way to develop seven factors of enlightenment is the dealing with the five hindrances. Try your best to overcome five hindrances. In order to overcome five hindrances, you have to listen to uh, good things and uh, gain a sense restraint. You should not enjoy your senses uh, expecting sensual pleasures. That's what you need to do. And then you should have your own so manasika, right attention. Our attention goes everywhere sometimes to un unwanted things. But we have to be careful not to pay attention to uh, lustful, greedy, ignorant things. So that could happen because of the Kalyanamitta. If you don't have Kalyanamitta, good friendship, wholesome friendship, you may listen to various things, you may watch various things that disturb your mind. So first, in the first place, we have to Kalyanamitta, good friendship, wholesome friendship. So see how the connection between one factor to the other come, to, come together and uh, give you something positive. And the negative side is also ignorance uh, create us so many bad things such as you know having bad friends so long we are ignorant we may not be able to find good friends uh, good friendship is not possible with the ignorant mind so uh, when we have bad friends when we have unho unwholesome friends we may not be able to listen to what is wholesome no discussion on dhamma no discussion on sutta so with that, we may not be able to develop our at right attention. No sense restraint could be developed. We are wild with our eyes, ears, and nose, and body, and so on. Then we cannot expect anything but by hindrances. We may be uh, very disturbed by even simple thing. We develop attachment. We become so angry at all, depending on things we have. So we are in a very mundane, very average life. No signs of seven factors of enlightenment, no Nibbana achievable at all. So now you see what you need to do to develop seven factors of enlightenment. So friends, uh, if you have any questions, uh, you may write to me in an email and I try my best to provide you answers. One of our regular members of the Sutta sent me an email uh, about uh, uh, the differences between uh, Bhujanga Sutta, this Sutta and also Girimananda Sutta. She asked why Buddha himself uh, went to Mahakasam, Mahamoggalana and delivered, delivered seven factors of enlightenment and uh, for, as a help and why he did not go to Girimananda and send Venerable Ananda with the, uh, with the, with the ten perceptions. So, uh, uh, you know, she asked, she, you know, uh, you know, guessed what would be the answer. She said that it was enough for Venerable uh, Ananda to go with the ten perceptions in mind and recite them in front of Venerable Girimananda for his recovery. Yes, that would be the reason. And there may be other reason, but, uh, you know, when you look at the ten perceptions, they are very deep too. What are the ten perceptions? Impermanence. The perception of impermanence. Perception of non-self. Perception of unattractiveness of the physical body. Perception of consequences of the physical body. Then the perception of cessation of uh, negative uh, feeling, negative perception. And the perception of dispassion, perception of cessation. Uh, and finally, uh, perception of uh, not attachment to anything in the body, then perception of impermanence of everything, and finally, the last one is perception of in and out breathing. So when one reflects these ten perceptions, uh, again, he is uh, crossing the boundaries uh, together with the uh, seven factors of enlightenment. So that's the end of food. Uh, for today, uh, we will meet again uh, next Thursday with a different discourse. However, you can uh, ask me questions uh, and I try my best to uh, you know, answer them uh, about this sutta or any other sutta uh, throughout the week. 
Having said that, I would like to conclude today's uh, Sutta studies. The Sutta we discussed today is Gilana Sutta, and it is called Kasapatra uh, Bodjanga 2. Uh, so, uh, hope you have a wonderful time. My, uh, you know, message to you during this difficult period: stay home and uh, take time uh, more and more to practice the Dhamma. Sit in a comfortable position and practice some sort of meditation as you feel and uh, try your best to be away from all kinds of negativities. May you also be able to uh, overcome any possibility of sicknesses, the virus, and uh, may you be well, happy and peaceful. May, the, may you have the blessings of the Noble Triple Gem and by, by the power of these merit, may you attain Nibban. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu.